First up, we have uh, Sam Ronan, who is going to be running in Ohio's first district. Uh, Sam, do we have you there? Absolutely, nice to meet you, thanks for having me on here. Awesome, we're so glad to have you here. Uh, I sort of teased this early on, but there is something unique about your candidacy. You are running as the only Republican, I believe that we've profiled, I could be wrong, but it's the first that I've interviewed here. You are running uh, to replace Steve Chabot as a Republican, but you are a progressive. Yes, sir, and actually there are a couple others that I personally know. Mm -hmm. uh, Lindsey Brown is running as well, I don't know if you've profiled her, and there is a gentleman in Arkansas, but suffice to say yes, I put my money where my mouth is. Last year I ran for the DNC chair, and I said, if I were the chair, we would still have to run Democrats as Republicans in deep red mm -hmm. states, because that's the only way you're gonna make it through, and here I am putting, uh, I guess, <laughs> the rubber to the road. Okay, well, it's gonna be an amazing test case. So, I, I mean, what, like explain to me, what led to you making that decision? Because obviously any any campaign is, is a big thing. It takes over mm -hmm. your life, it's a huge commitment, and you're really testing out something. I mean, I know you're acknowledging that there are a few others doing it as well, but it's still a fairly unique path that you're treading. Oh, what yeah. led to you making that decision? So, quite frankly, I had uh, lots of correspondence from uh, DNC insiders stating unequivocally that they were going to sabotage my campaign, that they were going to prevent me from winning the primary one way or the other. On top of that, this particular primary in this district was overly saturated with candidates as well, mm -hmm. as well as the pre-picked candidates from up on high. Mm -hmm. So it was just a natural course that I would go to the GOP side and just challenge the um, the incumbent directly. I see no reason to waste my resources in a failed bid for a, the Democratic primary when I can dedicate all of my time and resources against the incumbent directly. Should I win, we lose the incumbent regardless, meaning we've already achieved our victory, mm -hmm. which is replacing those people currently in office. So to me, it's, it's a no brainer. Now, the more resources, the more uh, support, the more uh, exposure and coverage such an effort can get, the better it will be, of course. And that's been uh, the trick, is to try and, and, and get into that, that niche, that, um, that market, that, that uh, the candidacy of the people, the constituency, to try and reach them. And that has been uh, the most challenging aspect by far. The message, surprisingly, being progressive, has actually been quite well received. Every time I knock on a door and I tell them about you know, uh, universal health care or education, jobs programs, clean energy, blah, blah, blah. But I say I'm a Republican and a veteran at that, all of a sudden I met with accolades. Whereas if I had said the same exact stuff like I did last year, but with the D next to my name, I was met with doors closed in my face. Isn't that amazing? Man, like, <laughs> you know, obviously we gotta, we gotta follow politics, we gotta follow the news and everything, but we are still humans and psychology, man, it's a hell of a thing when it interacts with politics. Um, it's but true. But I think I think it's a, it's a great message. I mean, the reason that we support these policies is we believe that they are better for everyone. They're not better for progressives, they're better for the country. And we mm -hmm. know that if you can strip away a bit of the tribalism, a lot of people will actually support those policies. So Absolutely. in a little bit, I wanna talk to you about the district and I wanna talk to you about uh, the current incumbent. Uh, but before that, I wanna give everyone the best possible chance to get excited about your candidacy and to want to uh, vote, to desperately vote for you. So I wanna talk about your ideas because okay. I, I'm personally, I'm so sick, I'm so done with the normal back and forth of the same ideas th that we get in every election cycle. And I know that you have some that stand out. So let's say let's say you get this, you get in there in Congress, you're, you're in the committee chambers, you're in those meetings, what are you pushing for? I am absolutely going to push for uh, the end of the military industrial complex. Now, I just said I was a veteran, I'm still in the reserves, all mm -hmm. right? I still don the uniform one week in a month, two weeks out of the year and sign up for extended tours. Yet, that being said, what we're doing in Syria is a, a crime against humanity. What we're doing or what we're allowing to happen against the Palestinians on behalf of Israel, the things that the, the Saudis are doing to their own people, the things the military, uh, just efforts that we support and that we're pursuing go against the United Nations, the, the Nuremberg trials and the Geneva Conventions. It's just a massive, just affront to humanity. Now, don't just stop there. Look at the money, look at the funding, right? We don't have money for education, roads, uh, clean energy or any of this, but we can add an additional $80 billion than what was requested to the defense budget. Mm -hmm. When most of that money, and I do say most, doesn't even go to the soldier or their families. Hell, it doesn't even go to the base to increase infrastructure. 
let me tell you something. We have Windows 10 as operating systems, and we still use Internet Explorer for all of our Internet activities. <laughs> and all, No, I, I can't make this up. All of our networks are centered around Internet Explorer, like yeah. deliberately centered around it, not Google or anything else, Internet Explorer. So it's just we are squandering money at record levels. Now, you, you said which policies are kind of uh, outside of the norm. Another one would be universal basic income. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know Bernie Sanders is pursuing the federal jobs guarantee, and I agree with it. I 1,000 percent support it, not because Bernie said it, but because it makes sense. The, there are plenty of things out there that need done, that public works. Mm-hmm. But the thing that I really liked about the, the military as far as how it takes care of people, you get your base pay, you get a skill, uh, and you get your housing and food co- uh, costs covered. You get your BAH and your BAS. Now. Imagine you're working minimum wage at McDonald's or maybe you're going through school and you're trying to get a degree. Well, what's the primary concern with anything? It's your your cost of living expenses, being able to put food on the table and to keep a roof over your head. If those were negligible, if those were no longer a concern, imagine how much more secure people would be in their economic abilities. So I think a federal jobs guarantee solves half of the problem and then the other half would be the universal basic income to yeah. offset those living expenses. Um, and then I guess I don't find it radical, but it's something that I, I, I find personally near and dear is uh, the ending of prohibition of marijuana. So full legalization of cannabis, especially in the hemp industry, because we're sitting on at least one and a half trillion dollars worth of taxes that we could be generating from that alone. Mm-hmm. Never mind the fact that our for profit prison industry would be destroyed overnight. Never mind the fact that our young black men uh, would no longer be in prison because you would have the uh, the I forget what the proper term is, but they'd have their um, like their record system. expunged of the exactly. Yes, yeah. I yeah. was actually going to ask you about that. I know there's a term for it, but I I don't know. I I think people get the idea, and uh, I know that you also support um, reparations for those who have been imprisoned for marijuana possession charges. Yes. which I have to say I had not thought about that. So well, thank you. I considered, I mean, think about it, right? I've seen the news article where that gentleman was in prison. I think he was, it was either the former Black Panther or just a guy who was in prison for 30 years. And he was given $37 after all of that from the state. Like, are you out of your mind? Mm -hmm. Hell no, 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 no. $30,000 a year, that's not a lot depending on where you are. It's certainly not amazing money, but $30,000 a year prorated per, you know, up to the day. So if it's like three years and seven days, you know, Three years times thirty thousand, and then seven, whatever. That's the reparations you should be getting. Yeah. yeah, and thank you by the way for for talking about basic income. It's an idea that I try to bring up as much as possible on the different shows that I'm on. And you'd be shocked how few people have ever even heard about it. Know that it's something that has been experimented on, and some of the potential benefits of it. So I'm glad to see more candidates like you actually talking about that out there on the campaign trail. Well, thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, in this district, people can have mm-hmm. you. Theoretically, right now, Steve Chabot's in the position. Who is Steve Chabot? What does he represent as the incumbent in that district? Well, he represents 97.3% of Trumpism, Mm -hmm. uh, to include the recent vote uh, to gut Social Security and Medicare, to raise the minimum age that you can actually receive those benefits. He voted for that. He also voted against the gun control um, after the, the various mass shootings that have occurred, and honestly, uh, beating the drums of war, even though he has himself never served, no one in his family has ever served, and he's going to have absolutely no skin in the game for these uh, particular war efforts, which is another reason yeah. why I want to end the military industrial complex. There's no reason why my brothers and sisters, why my cousins, my, you know, my friends and family should be put in harm's way while these cowards in office are the ones sending us off to die so they can profit. I think that's yeah. reprehensible. And with Shabbat, uh, sorry, his name, it's pronounced Shabbat. Um, his policies are just disgusting. He, he's literally Trump 2.0 before Trump was even Trump. Uh, I, I think if anything, he felt empowered mm-hmm. to vote these ways now. And uh, not to be petty, but it, it is, does bear mentioning, if a lot of the Republican candidates and people in, in power uh, profit off of their own office, he is no different. He is. Uh, funneled uh, campaign funds into his son's businesses mm-hmm. and his own. So I, I just think in general, <laughs> very Trumpy. I get it. Yeah, I just <laughs> I cannot understand why anybody would be on board with that when he has literally proven for over two decades 
where his loyalty is lying. It is not with yeah. the American people. Well, I have a feeling that as more and more of the people in your district get to know you in advance of the primary, I think the distinction will be pretty obvious to them. I would hope so, yeah. <laughs> and I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, no problem. Um, now, uh, unfortunately, we are running out of time, but I wanna tell people where they can find out uh, more about your candidacy. Uh, the website is roninforcongress.com. Uh, you can sign up to be a volunteer by going for, uh, to roninforcongress.com slash donate dash one. Either one will help. Uh, the other is a volunteer dash one if you want to volunteer, which I'm sure both of those uh, would be uh, much desired. And uh, your primary is coming up. It's a little bit more yes, than sir. a week away. Yep. So uh, I'm, I'm, we've, I'm we've held you for long enough. Go knock on doors. <laughs> You're right on it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you for Sam. Uh, good luck in the, the upcoming primary.